Okay, uh, we've been talking about permutation problems and combination problems. And so far, what we have developed is these kind of formulas. If, for example, we have n number of spin objects and we select k of them, the number of ways that we can do that is given by this formula. Or if we select n number of objects, this comes out to be equal to n factorial. We have covered all this, of course, in the um, earlier videos. Then, if we have, say, n objects, and we're selecting k of them, but not all of the uh, n different objects are unique, some of them are of one kind, some of them are a different kind, and we have different numbers of these. Then we learn that in this situation, we just call this n equals x factorial, where x is equal to n factorial divided by this. But these represent the different types of objects where there are repeat numbers of them. And we get an example that we work with this. And in future videos, we're going to work some more of these type of examples where not all of the objects are unique. Because it turns out that we can solve those kind of problems with this approach, and also we can solve them by using combinations, which takes us to our next formula we have developed. And here we have for the moment n distinct objects and we're selecting k of them and putting them in different groups. But what distinguishes one group from another is not the order of the objects, but whether in each different group they have at least one object that's not found in another group. And when we look for this is that we developed in some previous videos, and also we noted that there's a shorthand notation for this, the so-called binomial coefficient, and also in a previous video we demonstrated that this is equal to this binomial coefficient. So those are some of the things that we have dealt with along the way. Now we want to start working some combination problems. Here we have a pretty straightforward one to help get us started. Let's say that a box contains, say, a penny, one penny. Uh, say we have a nickel. So, there's one of eight, so all these are unique. And let's say then, you want to ask this question. Well, if we can remove two coins out of the box, what are the different sums of money that we could remove there? So, what matters here, we're selecting two objects, of course, the order of the objects makes no difference at all. What's going to make the difference then is the different types of objects that we select. So, this is a combination problem. And we have five objects to choose from, five distinct objects, and we get to choose two of them. So how many different ways can we do this? Of course, this is equal to I factorial 
divided by 5 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So we have 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial. So this is equal to 5 times 4. We'll just write the whole thing now since these are small numbers. Divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial, which is 2. So those cancel. That puts them to the other 2. 5 times 2 equals 10. So having this selection, and we're allowed to take out two coins at any one time, that can be done in 10 different ways then, and obviously that would give us 10 different amounts of money that we would be selecting each time. Now, suppose we did three different, suppose we could take out three different coins, what would happen then? How many different ways could we do it? Well, of course it's the same formula, and that's going to be 5 factorial, over 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. This equals divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial. This is what we had up here. So it's the same, it's going to equal 10. In fact, we should have anticipated that because of what we already know about binomial coefficients from this formula. So, originally, let's just make some rules here. Originally, the problem was this binomial coefficient such as two coins initially, then it was this binomial coefficient. But you see here the two is the k and n minus k is five minus two which is three. Of course we already know that those are going to be equal to each other. So for this problem here, whether we select two coins at a time or whether we select three coins at a time at a time each way, it's going to give us 10 different sums of money. Uh, okay, I think that was it for this video. We just want to try to choose a few basic example to get us going here with combination problems and also to kind of review some of the formulas that we have already developed. And we're going to try now and pull some more complicated combination problems and also where you have combination and permutations combined into a single problem. So we'll get those in the future videos. Um, one thing we want to kind of warn you about or forewarn you about, when we put the videos up on YouTube, a lot of times it gets scattered all over the place, and we are kind of presenting with you in a logical sequence that hopefully is helpful to you. But you might have found other videos listed logically on YouTube, but if you go to the website, there you will find all the videos in their proper order. Also at the website, there's hundreds more of problem-solving videos and a whole lot of other different categories that might help you. Anyway, come back and join us for some more videos and we'll try and solve some more topics.